Hey guys, Mateo here. I'm the Guild Master Patch and Gaming, and today is a look at the brand new patch that's about to come out today on the 2nd of October uh, 2019. But if you didn't know, um, this is going to be a pretty big patch, guys, because we have the Molagora adjustments for two and three star units. Uh, they're further lowering the uh, Molagora requirements for four and five star units. Uh, Desert Jewel Basler is coming out. And a few more things. So we're, we're going to go through it and then I'll give some of my thoughts and on these changes as they go. Um, so the most brilliant gem and all of Kai Ruberan, new hero Desert Jewel Basara has arrived. The skill enhancement system will be improved. Uh, so it's now simpler to enhance your heroes. Check out these improvements and other conveniences, convenience changes down below. So this is uh, Bas Basara, Bazar. Star coming out, the most brilliant gem in the history of Kairu Brand. Um, he can be found in the Moonlight Summons, Mystic Summons, and in the Covenant. So if you didn't get um, Judge Kisei, this is your very last chance to do it today before the patch because the Mystic Summons is going to be changing over to Desert Jewel, Bazaar, and um, Blood Blade Karen. Blood Blade Karen will be the four star for this next rotation coming up here. And uh, so he is a Sagittarius uh, Soul Weaver. He is a he is a Soul Weaver, and uh, I'll read you some of his abilities. Um, so his S1, he attacks the enemy with wind, with 25% chance to stun for one turn. Uh, the effect chance and the damage of the ability um, can be increased with Molagora. It attacks his Soul Burn, costs two souls or 20. It attacks all enemies, increases the amount recovered by Everlasting Oasis, and which is his S2. So it heals all allies after using Desert Wind. Amount recovered increases proportional to the target's max health and the caster's attack. And that's pretty important um, because if you look at characters like Ruella of Light or Destina, um, their heals are based on their HP. That's why you need to give them a lot of HP so they can heal for more. This one is based on, their S1s at least, this one is based on the target's max HP and his own attack. So no matter, so if you have a really tanky unit, the tankier your unit is, there's going to be a proportional heal there, right? It's not like you're going to have somebody that's really tanky and then you make him, let's say you want to build him for speed because of his S3, which we'll get into, and you don't, you're do not you not going to suffer from his healing being lower uh, because you're not stacking HP on him if you want him to go first, or you want him to be in a speed set, or you want some variety like uh, you want to put him in a counter set or something. So if he's not sitting there with, you know, 20K plus or, you know, 25K or, you know, however bulky you would, typically have uh, HP based soul weaver you're not going to be punished for that and it does heal all all allies um, so his s3 is Bastet roars dispelling all debuffs from all allies before increasing their combat readiness by 20% and after awakening it will dispel all debuffs and grant immunity for three turns to all allies before increasing their combat readiness by 20% uh, it also it gets minus one cooldown from Molagora. It also goes from 20 to 30% combat radius. Um, so my thoughts on this for, for Basser, he's going to be good if you aren't already drowning in five-star Moonlight characters. If you don't already have May Chloe, Ruella of Light, Fallen Cecilia, Carmen, Arbiter Vildred, and you're running some, you're running some combination of those, along with uh, Seaside Bologna and Dizzy, which is like 99% of the top 500 people that are running some variation of that. And then now you can add Lilius into that mix and whatnot, right? So probably the same eight to 10 units. If you have those eight to 10 units, then you probably don't need my advice on what unit you should add or not. Um, if you're one of the people that recalled your Carmen, and you're looking to add that three turn immunity back into your defense, this is going to be a great time to do it. Um, specifically because of that combat readiness increase on his S3, uh, that's going to be pretty, that's, that's going to be, if you if you looked at my arena tip of the day video, that's going to be one of those game changers or one of those surprises that you throw people for, one of those loops you throw them for. Um, to, to eke out a win that they weren't expecting. You know, they probably think, oh, you're really slow, you're really slow, and then all of a sudden, 
now your your desert jewel ambassador is 230 240 250 speed you give them get that three turn immunity now all of a sudden their dizzy can't apply their debuffs or you know whatever their debuff setup is doesn't work and now they're getting you're giving the plus 30 percent now your fallen cecilia can get the skill nullifier up so you know your that judge kisei cleave can't get you right so there, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways that you can uh throw a wrench into their plans by having an unexpectedly fast desert jewel bazaar or even just idols cheer or water's origin that can allow that 30 percent or 20 to 30 percent depending on how much you mola him uh combat readiness to play into uh your defensive game plan to throw the opponent for a loop so this, he's definitely an interesting unit. Uh, definitely keep an eye out for that. Even if you read these abilities and you don't think they're very good, um, you're you're probably going to be surprised by what a few people use him for or use him with on defense. Now here's the big thing: it's the skill improvement and skill enhancement system improvements. Two and three star heroes have had their uh, system improved. For Mulligores, two and three star hero skill enhancement upgrade requirements will be changed so that they require Stigma instead of Mulligora. And heroes that have had their skills enhanced will be able to be recalled and players will receive all invested materials back. So let's say, um, and for good reason, you have Chaos Sect Axe and Lorena and Terranor Guard and Alexa and all of these other units that you use for Wyvern 11 or pre nerf automaton tower or pre-nerf uh, abyss um that were just, just huge pve boon characters that were three star and you have them molded up to plus 15. you're going to be getting all of those molas back you recall them you'll get all the molas back and all the catalysts and all the gold you spent and you get to just spend stigma to get them back up now if you if you were very low on stigma because you're lazy like me and you just grow penguins from the lobby from sanctuary and you don't actually farm in the game um then yeah that's the, you're gonna probably be hurting there for just a little teeny bit until until you can farm your stigma back up but this is way better to just be sitting there with this this big treasure trove of molagora i don't know about you guys but there are so many units i have on the back burner that i can't use yet because they're plus zero and i don't have the molas for them uh, and so I I just got my just Kisei to a point where she's good enough to be to use. So that's how backed up I am with Mulligora. So this is going to be huge for me. And um, so you see here, uh, so instead of 18 Mulligora for two star units, uh, there will be 5400 Stigma. And instead of 27 for three star units, it'll be 8100 Stigma. So this, so let's say you had a plus 15 Lorena, you're going to be getting those 27 Mulligora back tomorrow. And you have until New Year's Day, the day after New Year's when they have that patch, because New Year's is on Tuesday, so that Wednesday patch on the 2nd, you have until January 2nd to trade in these units, to recall them, get your Molas back, and spend the stigma if you want them to, to be skill enhanced anyway. Um, the reset skill function will only be available to heroes that have been enhanced prior to the update on the third. So you can't cheat. You can't enhance somebody, you know, after the fact and then recall them and get a bunch of molas back. That doesn't work. Um, all of their skills will be reset to zero, so it'll 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 cancel out everything that's over here. So you'll get all your molas back. They'll go back down to zero, and then you can spend the stigma. Uh, don't look for it in your mailbox. All the materials refunded will be directly placed into your inventory. And, but don't quote me on that because I don't I don't program for this game. If it's not, I would open a ticket, look in your mailbox or whatnot. But this is an example of what it looks like. It's going to tell you how many uh, catalysts and Mulligore you get back and how much gold you get reset. Uh, you're still you're still going to be sixty now. Understand that this isn't a recall like the way it was if a character got nerfed and you just want to get rid of the character and you just they give you back everything. This is just a skill reset. This is just the skill reset. So your character is still going to be level 60. If it was level 60 or whatever it was, you're just taking all the molas off. So it's going back down to plus zero and they're giving you the molas and the catalyst back. So you can now use stigma to get it back if you want it. Um, so now a big thing here is the four and five stars are also getting their skills reduced again. So if the four stars are going from 33 to 27 and five stars are going from 42 to 33. So what this means that if you are over and most of um, let me let me start over 
So most of the adjustments that are being made to the skills of four and five stars are in the early levels. The early levels. So if you think about um, just the bare minimum to make a unit serviceable, you probably want the minus one cooldown on their S3, right? So uh, how many molas does that take? Five or six? Four, four or five star? It takes five or six. That's what they're attacking. They're, they're lowering that. So a, a lot more people this time around are going to see refunds than before. Um, because previously they were attacking the last levels. So if you had a hero that wasn't wasn't plus 13 or 14 or 15, chances are you weren't going to get a lot back from that. This time they're dropping it down from the front end. So even if you don't have, even if your units aren't plus 15, you're probably going to be getting some molas back um, if you you know they're, if if they, you had the molet just a little bit up there because that's that's exactly. Um, what they say here, and I'm, I'm trying to find where that is in the text while I'm reading here. Um, yeah, so it says, in particular, the amount of Molagora required to skill enhance low to mid-level skills will be significantly re reduced. So it's, it's, it's the lower levels. So if you just have something up to plus 5 or plus 6 or plus 7 or plus 8, you know, just to get the cooldowns reduced, um, then that's what's going to be lowered. So more people, you're... Even if you don't think you, you've spent a lot of molas on your units, you're probably going to be getting some, some molas back here. Um, they're getting they're finally getting rid of Mola Gora Gora, which is the big yellow and black one. If you haven't if you weren't playing it released, then you've never seen this before. You saw it you saw an exchange for it in the shop. Um, it's for it's for the very rare and few people that had an opportunity um, to get it from pre nerf pre pre nerf Abyss. It, there we got a one Mola Gora Gora as a reward from one of the Abyss levels through one through eighty, and they they changed it in a, in a patch this winter, and now they're finally getting rid of it. They're getting rid of the exchange. We just don't even need to know it exists anymore, and they're going to. If you're one of the poor saps that not poor saps, but you just for whatever reason, let's say you quit the game, you never came back, you never exchanged it, they're going to give it. Put it in your mailbox. They'll give you the 25 Mola Goras. They'll put them in your mailbox, and they're going to delete your Mola, Mora, Mola Gora Gora. Now, here's a, here's a big one. A lot of people have been asking for this, is the Mola Gora Exchange. So currently, you can exchange your Mola Gora for Mola Gora Go, the, the red ones, but you can't change them back. So there's a lot of people, myself included, I have six of the red ones and nothing to spend them on. I need tons of Molagora, but all those Molagora goes that we have from all the reductions, from all the nerfs of the Molagora costs, well, they made it stuff not use Molagora go, but they didn't give us a way to, tr to trade them back. So now it's finally come. Now with this new exchange button, you can trade them back and forth. So you can go from Molagora to Mol Molagora go, or you can take all those useless Molagora goes if you're hanging on to them like I, I am, and you can get your Mulligores out of them. So you can do the, the one to four trade with those. Um, and then they have some bug fixes and other convenience changes. So apparently Karen, um, if Karen was bust with Alexa's basket, uh, he did not AOE on, on turn one. If he got a buff from Alexa's basket on turn one, he did not AOE with his S1. That is fixed. Um, Desert Jewel Bazaar's Memory imprint has been buffed. It was the equivalent of a four-star hero. It's going to be buffed to be that of a five-star hero. Uh, Chloe's character description has been fixed. Heroes that have special conditions for enhancing, promoting, or memory imprinting will now say so right here on the unit. And, you know, that's just for people that are newer to the game. Um, you weren't around because there used to be a tutorial for this when the, all those kind of units were found in the event section. They would go through a little tutorial when you, when you looted your first one. And uh, since that's gone, they're going to put that right there on the screen, so there's no confusion. Um, an issue where the image of Yufin's exclusive equipment as your Dragon Spirit is occasionally not displayed will be fixed. Kudos. Uh, here's a big one. Try again button. Amazing, right? So you don't have to yield anymore. There's now a try again button. The try again button will be added to the pause menu during battles. Tapping the button will allow players to forfeit the current battle and return to the team selection screen, allowing the player to start the stage again. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, a year in, and here we go. We gotta try again button. Good job, Smilegate. Try again. Where's my auto repeat? <laughs> so, um, they, they improved the story for Labyrinth for Zone 2 Frozen Lake. I assume this is because, you know, they, they, they talked about adding more levels to Labyrinth 
um, at some point. So I assume they're cleaning things up in the story in Nick Seed's Sanctum uh, to get ready for that. Because otherwise, I don't know why they would they would bother to to kind of clean up the story there. Um, an issue where a hero's dual attack a AOE dual attack misses despite not being debuffed by Executioner Carcanus and Asm Asmacalus raid mode will be fixed. And yes, that's annoying, and it primarily only affects Dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, there are some other heroes uh yuna has an aoe s1 karen has an aoe s1 when he's buffed um so no but it's, it's, it's primarily dizzy but it, they're they're fixing that issue um so if the unit is cu currently if the unit that triggers the dual attack is debuffed the dual attack will also miss and you you'll get you'll get beat up by by um Executioner, because um, it, it counts the dual attack as one attack, so both of you miss, and that's uh, really unfortunate. Because it'll, cl it'll cleanse the debuffs off, off or cleanse the debuffs off of him. Uh, an issue where your arena victory points are not being displayed correctly will be fixed. If that affected any of you, uh, an issue where after a certain amount of time, protector's punishment was not applied will be fixed. I don't know who's running the long game. Uh, this never happened to me, but if that's been happening to you, sorry to say you can't make the match go indefinitely, you need to die to lightning. Uh, an issue where the incorrect rewards were granted upon clearing October's Automaton Tower will be fixed. Uh, that was on another patch note. They uh, already said the, the compensation or whatnot is gonna be in your mailbox by the end of the third. Um, and then please see below for what the rewards should be for this month. Please note that these rewards are only for October. Um, as you can note, uh, there are some nerfs here um, remember last last month we got uh, 78 eye level um, necklace and ring and they were equivalent to the 85 epics that you would get from uh, hunts so you know they had 60% main stat and whatnot on it so uh, this is this should be a, a slight nerf for this month um, but there is the reward chest but there is the reward chest there so uh, take your freebies. Don't complain too much. It's still you're still getting the Mulligoras, still getting the Gold Transmit Stones, still getting the Sky Stones. Uh, you know you're you're still getting the Galaxy Bookmarks. You're still getting the Charms. Still getting the Terra Phantasma. It, it's that's great. If if it had no gear in it and it was just here, have some more, have some more stuff, have some more uh, ML Summons, have some more Mulligoras. I'm fine with that. I'll take it. I'll take. It. In the Mystic Summon menu, the next Mystic Summon button icon will be improved so that it can be more easily understood. Um, and improvements will be made so that a lock icon is displayed on the storage button if storage content has not yet been unlocked. Um, there's going to be a new addition to the main story. In 10.9, Episode 1, Hallucination, Hall of Hallucinations will be added. Um, I'm not sure what that is. I have a, I have a guess, but I'm, I'm not sure what that is as of yet. Certain texts shown in the Hidden Zones will be adjusted for Episode 2. Stages have limited daily admissions will now show clearly on the map. You don't have to click on them. You don't have to go into it. You can just see right there um, how many entries you have left for the day. Uh, they're fixing up some text. And then they're also fixing up some text in the game guide. And these are important. Um, I'm going to talk about these a little bit just because... Uh, they are important to where the game is because there's some things that we there's some assumptions we made about the game and yes they, they have come out and clarified this but now this is this is really set in stone now um, you know because some of us came from Summoner's War or whatnot or other games that had these mechanics in it so we're like yeah that's the way it works but now that we have confirmation so uh, one of them is you know the crushing blow mechanic from Summoner's War is called strike here um, you notice it when you attack and the text is bigger regardless of whether it crits or not if the text is bigger it you, you kind of have this feeling man that do more damage and it does um, is the 30% chance to occur when the attacker fails to make a critical hit, the damage dealt is increased by 30%. So we, I call it a crushing blow. Um, it was a mechanic in World of Warcraft as well, some other MMOs. Uh, it's it's just a it's a it's a consolation prize for not critting. It's, it's a crit without critting. 
um, and so now it's confirmed and it's there in, in the in the game guide. They're clarifying some things here, and they're also clarifying the 15% effect or effect resistance that can't be um, mitigated or gotten through by the attacker's effectiveness. So they're, they're clarifying some things in the game guide, and all this stuff is already in here. They're just they're just extrapolating upon it. They're just making it a little bit bigger um, just for that. So that's that's all we got. Get. That's all for the patch notes here. Uh, biggest thing for me, most exciting thing is the Molagoras. I can't, you know, that's it just warms my heart when I get to plus 15, another cup, two or three units, or I don't even know how many I'm going to get. But, you know, it's another few units out there. Um, and oh, by the way, uh, we have another buff event that'll be coming up. And here are the time zones. Wherever you are in the world, this is this is where they will be. Uh, we're here on the global server. So this is a uh, twelve um, universal time until ten the next day. Well, twelve to ten. Pretty pretty good chunk of time. So we're, the first buff we're going to get is thirty percent XP. Uh, gold increase, 50% hunt material drop rate increase. Uh, so we get get that right away. And then we'll be going into runes and then back to the XP gold increase, hunt material increase, and then back to runes. So it's going to flip flop for uh, four days. So that's pretty exciting too. And that's all we got for the patch notes. I just thought I'd share that with you guys. I know uh, some people don't read the patch notes. So, you know, I, I do this primarily for my, my small community. And I uh, thought it verbalized a lot of things out there. The most important things are Molagori changes, Desert Jewel Bastard is coming out. Um, yeah, that's it for me. That's this for me. Until next time, guys, have a good one.